ends tonight. It ends tonight. It ends tonight. Just a little inside. We welcome you back to the Georgia Dome in downtown Atlanta. The Arkansas Razorbacks taking on the Gators of Florida. And first on the field from Fayetteville, the Razorbacks of Arkansas. Right behind them, led by Brandon Seiler, here come the Gators. Moments away from kickoff in the 15th edition of the SEC Championship. And for more on the Gators, the third member of our group, let's go down to Tracy Wilson. Trace. Thanks, guys. One of the difference makers in this game tonight could be wide receiver freshman Percy Harvin, but the Gators almost didn't have him for this game. It was a scary scene as Harvin lay motionless on the field after hard collision. He briefly lost feeling in his arms and his legs and was carted off the field. Fortunately, Harvin suffered just a bruise to the spinal cord. He is expected to play. But keep an eye on running back Deshaun Wynn and linebacker Earl Everett. Both barely practiced this week, but they will try and play. As for linebacker Brandon Seiler, he told me yesterday his knee is fine and he's good to go. Guys? Thank you, Tracy. Gators won the toss. They have deferred the option to the second half, which means that Arkansas will get the ball. This Joey Eos, number 98, will kick off. He does not kick it very deep. Seven touchbacks on 50 kickoffs, and these guys return it deep. Was practicing a lot of squib kicks in warm-ups. Just kicking line drives, afraid of those two guys. And look at, they're on the 10-yard line. Jones and McFadden are lined up. And both have kickoff returns for touchdowns this season. Most recently, Darren McFadden at Mississippi State. He booms this one, and he heads all the way. How about that? Indoors. Yeah. Indoors. Think he's not juiced? As are some of the fans. Eos, <laughs> only his eighth touchback this season. And Casey Dick gets the starting lineup, uh, starting job at quarterback. The lineups tonight presented by Dr. Pepper. Casey Dick, with what he told us, was the worst game of his career. Yeah, it had to be a nightmare. Darren McFadden out through him. Up front, Hugo Parker, Luig, Spelton, and Tubbs. It is an outstanding offensive line. Marcus Monk, McFadden, Barrett Jackson opens at fullback. They hand it off on the right sweep to the right. It was McFadden lined up wide left. Gets perhaps a yard. Defensively, this is a superb defense against the run. Up front, McDonald, Cohen, Stephen Harris, Jarvis Moss. The linebackers, Crum, Seiler, and Earl Everett, who might be hobbled by an injury. The secondary, the All-American number one, Reggie Nelson. He has had a sensational season. Here they come already with that package. Oh, another wrinkle. McFadden starts at quarterback and shifts out to wide receiver. Way wide left. Casey Dick inside number one. Damon Williams, the true freshman from Springdale, Arkansas. It will be third down. There's a flag down on the far side of the field. So they lined up in what Arkansas calls their wildcat formation with McFadden there, and he shifts way out to the outside. Casey Dick goes back. And there you see McFadden, not a wide receiver. On the defense, defense got in the neutral zone before the snap. Five-yard penalty with the second down. Steve Shaw, referee, indicating offside against Florida. Ooh, those penalties for Florida. Well, they average eight and a half penalties per game, far and away the most penalized team in the Southeastern Conference. Here's McFadden in the wild card. Up the middle. 
Wild cat, not the wild card. Yes. Well, he's a wild card, though. I will say that. <laughs> You know, that's interesting. You can already see that game plan starting to come out. Houston Nutt told us we have to be able to run the ball between the tackles as you look at those yards in that Wildcat formation because he feels this Florida team, LSU's a good defense, but he felt this Florida team was faster than LSU and he needs to run it at him. Third and three, Felix Jones, number 25 is in. Little confusion on the formation. Now Dick comes in motion, leaving Felix Jones in the quarterback at the Wild Cat formation. Nothing. No, nothing at all. So we talked about the Arkansas running ability against this Florida defense goes early to Florida. Well, see, Flor Florida knows that if they don't stop that Wildcat formation, they, they don't have a chance. They wore pads and hit on Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. And you look, Reggie Nelson right there, he is the guy that's going to be involved all day. But they didn't even get to him this time. Stopped up front. Brandon James drifts back. He's late going back on fourth down. Jacob Skinner, his net punting average is fine. He doesn't kick for a long distance, but, uh, well, this one will be almost returnable. So Florida takes over. Well, this we've grown used to this. Wow. I'm not, well, I know I'm not used to this. It's like uh, body sculpting here, you know? I mean, you're... You could draw this guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been effective. It, it feels like Florida is real aggressive early in this football game. Even that punt return right there, how aggressive they feel to that punt. First down 10. Good field position now for the Gators. Chris Leak in the shotgun. Runs the inside option. They get across the 45. It's Percy Harvin. Tracy reported the uh, very scary injury last week. But we are told he is 100%. Offensively, it's Chris Leak. He has a chance to surpass Danny Werfel yards pass in a career yes. tonight. Trout, Wine, Tart, Rissler, Miller, and Metter up front. Drew Miller already down after the first play. You see him, number 67, right there. Baker, Cornelius, and Caldwell, the wideouts. Deshaun Wynn is the running back. He's hobbled as well. And here is Drew Miller. He's been uh, injured a couple of times this yeah, year. Yeah, he has. And that offensive line is not very deep. It has been the same five starters all but one game this year. Tart missed one game. But Drew Miller, number 67, is the guy that's going to limp, limp off. You can see him. He's right in the middle right there. He was the pulling guard, and he got fell on from behind. That's what happens usually. Big Keith Jackson made the tackle, and they fell on from behind Drew Miller. So Drew Miller, a junior from Sarasota, Florida, played his high school ball alongside the starting center, Steve Rissler. And Ronnie Wilson, number 70, is in to take his place. Second down, seven. Keiston Moore is the running back. Number 33. Chris Leak rolling right. Drills it. Incomplete intended for... Cornelius Ingram, it'll be third and seven. Defensively, for Reggie Herring, the coordinator, and the Razorbacks, Anderson Mitchell, Keith Jackson Jr., Antoine Robinson. Elijah Boudou is having an all-SEC year. Dacus and Hewitt, the others. Hewitt fighting an injury. Chris Houston is an outstanding corner. Yes, he is, but Florida will try to throw the ball on corner number three, four, and five. That's how many receivers you'll see all day. They hand it off. Keiston Moore, one-on-one -on -one with Randy Kelly. Caught from behind. Huge gaping hole on the right side. Uh, that was what you call the isolation off tackle behind the fullback. <laughs> this was a play that was run maybe in the 70s in the SEC. Florida dials it up against Arkansas. You can bet that Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator, and the Arkansas team was not ready for that play. 28-yard gain, longest of the year for Keiston Moore. Percy Harvin is in the backfield, number eight. Behind Chris Leak, four men wide. Three near side, one top of the screen. Option, Harvin gets the pitch. Leak pays the price. 
Harvin with great speed forced out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Picked up nine. See, that made it a little bit too easy. Believe me, I ran the option in college. I did not want to keep the ball. Thank you. I want to pitch it. Antoine Robinson comes. Thank you. I don't want it anyway. I'll pitch it every time. Robinson needs to play it slower and make Chris Leak make a decision slower. It's a loss of three on the last play, third and 13. Ernest Mitchell got the tackle on the last one. Number 90. Remember they blitzed last time on third and long. Delayed blitz this time. Leak will take off and run. Oh, and not terribly aggressive at the end of the run. Hey, guess what time it is? It's field goal time. Oh, boy. And Chris Leak not lowering the shoulder. Chris Hetland is a look at the end. Yeah, he knew he wasn't going to make it. He tried to slow down, and uh, he obviously didn't. Now, you, this is an obvious field goal situation, but when you're three for 12, Urban Meyer is going to figure out what to do. Boy, you, told me, you talk about a slap in the face. There's a flag. Florida, that's their first warning. Sideline side warning. warning. Well, Florida. you know, he said he was quoted earlier in the week. They've had so many problems. You got to go field with goal. With Chris You got to go field goal, don't you? I think so, and they're going to bring Hetland out. Why not? It's his birthday. If he can't make a field goal on his birthday, why do it? I talked to him yesterday. My advice to him was, Aim small, miss small. Pick out something in the horizon. Kick it to some guy. Well, they've had sports psychologists by his side, in his face. This one will be 33 yards. And now a delay of some sort. Well, resetting the clock. Last thing he needs is more time to think about it. He was 13 of 16 a year ago, and this season has been inexplicable for him. He got it. Good for him. Happy birthday. You don't normally see that kind of celebration for a 33-yard <laughs> field goal. But no, he, the sense of relief, yeah. Gary, must be overwhelming. I asked him, what's it like? He said, I know everybody hates me, and I'm just going to concentrate on my job. And let her fly, and he did. 3 nothing, Gators. I don't think I have ever seen the kind of enjoyment over a small field goal. No, Not so small no, never. in Chris Hetland's world. Best birthday he's ever had. Oh, boy. Best birthday gift he's going to get, too. He ain't going to get a gift better than that. Joey Eos will kick off, but you made the point, Gary, during the commercial big stop for By Arkansas. Absolutely. I think Arkansas is happy about that stop. Here is the kick. Felix Jones. Out to the 30-yard line. You see they have yet to pass. And they will not on this down. Max Patton rolls over the right side. Biggest gain of the early going. That's See, a pickup of 12. Houston Nutt, and, and I think his his quote is, is, is excellent. And this is what he told his team. Yeah, Florida's a good defense. Look at them. They're stacked up there. They got eight guys up there. But you know what? Everybody's got eight guys up against us all year, and we block everybody. There's no reason we can't block Florida, and we got the best running back. Siler doesn't even get blocked on that play, number 40, and McFadden runs right by him. First down and 10. Here's Dick. Across the middle, caught. This is Ben Cleveland, the tight end. A fellow freshman out of Springdale High School. See, this is a called gimmick play. Called gimmick play. They see the two deep safeties. This was probably a check. The safeties are wide. The tight end right here, okay? You're going to see it. He's going to go out and then into that middle. Watch this. Come out, delay, delay, and go right in the middle. Siler almost gets the play on it, but that's a gimmick play. Tight end delay. Here's the Wildcat. McFadden keeps it. And uh, cut down near the line of scrimmage. Brandon Siler, number 40. Junior from Orlando, Florida. Siler, who was injured about three weeks ago. Casey Dick got a man wide open on the left flat. It's Damon Williams, another of the Springdale connection. So 
Cleveland and Williams, who played for Gus Malzahn along with Mitch Mustaine last year when they went 14-0. Well, well, how about this? Florida gets their field goal kicker to kick a field goal, and Arkansas gets their quarterback to complete a pass. <laughs> I think both teams are pretty happy at the start of this football game. Very simple. Had to be a bust right there. That's too simple. The guy wide open in the secondary, and that's even easy for any a struggling quarterback to hit. Third and 13. Derek Harvey, pass rushing specialist at left end. Now more shifting as Felix Jones comes near side and Casey Dick five yards back. Under some pressure, throws it away. All right, I don't know if he was throwing it away. He just was yeah. so heavily pressured by Derek Harvey. I, I think that was a, he tried to throw it away and Reggie Nelson almost caught up to that thing, didn't he? Yes. A sack would have been disastrous, though, for Casey Dick. So he did the right thing at throwing it away. He might not have read it right. You see Gus Malzahn right there trying to ask him, why did you do that? But at least he didn't take a big sack. That brings on Jeremy Davis. He's had uh, an average year, 6 of 11. His long is 44. This will be a 40-yard field goal attempt. If good, we're tied. Had an extra point blocked a couple of weeks ago. This one has plenty of distance, but it is wide right. You know why? It's not his birthday. It's not his birthday, is it? Game's on the wrong day. Push to the right all the way. Got it up, got it high, but he got it about three feet to the right of the field goal. Yeah, Jeremy Davis grabbed the job after Stephen Arnold lost it in the loss to USC, but he misfires on this one. We've reached the end of one. It's 3-0. We'll return to the Georgia Dome after this message and a word from your local station. A 3-0 Florida lead after the missed field goal by Jeremy Davis and Chris Leak and the Gators have it first down and 10 from the 23. Florida ranked number four in the BCS standings. Leak got a man open. Incomplete. Well, you got to catch that one, don't you? Percy Harvin beat the jam, but then he stumbled. And I think when he stumbled, he really never focused. To, I'm trying to help you, Percy, the best I can. I'm trying to help him, aren't I, Vern? You are. The, you know, I mean, you got to catch up. I think the ball was on the way. It surprised him a little, and he uh, dropped it. Darius Bennett was covering, but uh, got a step behind. So Harvin with the drop. It's third down. Lee bobbles it, picks it up, and runs, caught from behind. That is the seventh fumble this year by Chris Leak. He got this one back. It took a bounce right back up into his hands. It yeah. will be fourth down. Shotgun should be automatic. To look his eye off. Didn't he? he looked yeah. for coverage right away. He just took it for granted. And then from behind, by the Ernest Mitchell, number 90, that got him from behind. I think Randy Kelly was going to get him anyway. And so fourth down, Eric Wilbur on to punt. Has had one blocked this year. This one nice and high. And a fair catch taken at the nine yard line by Reggie Fish, number seven. So Wilbur, a very effective punt, 33 yards, but inside the 10. 3 0 Gators on Chris Hetland's happy birthday. It's 3 0 here, Florida leading. Total yardage, not that much different, 76 to 62. Arkansas from its own nine, worst field position by either team in the game. Casey Dick fires it right side. That's Darren McFadden. Third down and eight. Felix Jones still the running back. Casey Dick out of the shotgun. Three of five in this game. Batted down. Stephen Harris. It'll be fourth down. Well, this defense is just not a reputation defense. This is a real deal. They run, they hit, and they fill their lanes. 
They've been stopping the run against everybody all of the, all the way. We saw them against Tennessee, hold Tennessee to negative yards. I think they're the fastest defense in the country. And particularly at the end position, don't you think? Yes, and they're, they're good up the middle, too, with the linebackers, Everett right. and Reggie Nelson, too. I really love those linebackers. Fourth down, Jacob Skinner on to punt. Brandon James, good field position possibly here for Florida. He's at the 41. And they just do get the... Oh, it's blocked! It is blocked! That's the fifth blocked punt this year by Florida. Jared Faison, wide receiver, high school quarterback. Special team stand out tonight. This seemed to take forever to punt this ball. Florida's had seven block kicks. This is the fifth punt, as Vern told you. They come right up the gut. Number 11 gets a little push. Nobody touches him. Takes it right off the foot. And you know, everybody thinks that block field goal was huge, South Carolina. Ooh, this is huge here. Here's the handoff. It's Chris Leak. Touchdown! No hesitation there. Not for a moment. As we said in the open, give me the ball, coach. I can win the football game. Urban Meyer said I loved it. I've been waiting for it. I want my quarterback to be the guy that wants the ball. He let him run the ball. First play after the block punt. Chris Hetland's extra point is up and through. Nine-yard touchdown. Fake it. This is the Urban Meyer offense right here that he brought from Utah. The quarterback must be able to run the ball. And look at that. Take it into the end zone. Give me the ball, coach. The senior who wants a defining game before he graduates with the TD. Where the score is 10-0 on Chris Leak's nine-yard scamper for the touchdown. And the Gators are roaring. If Gators can roar, they can chomp, I know that. Felix Jones and London Crawford are going to be the deep men now. Yeah, you wonder if, if McFadden is still nicked a bit from that, uh, you know, first pass he caught on the first down last series. Uh, we saw him uh, getting a tape job on his right elbow. So London Crawford, a freshman, is back with Felix Jones and Joey Eos will kick off. Block punt by Faison. And a touchdown. This one's very, very short. Taken at the 17. It's not the worst thing in the world. That might. You think that was by design? You saw him probably. Early. Yep. Yeah. Arkansas with the first down. McFadden is on the field. And after the 28-yard line, tackle made by Derek Harvey, number 91. And here, it would appear, is a throwing circumstance. They've got to be careful. They are not built for this third and long, Arkansas. Take the reverse, flip it out, dropped. Damon Williams, fourth down. So three and out after the touchdown. Reggie Nelson. Yeah, see, when, you hit, when you're fast up the middle, you're looking like an NFL defense. That's what NFL defenses do. They have speed up the middle at linebacker and safety. Jacob Skinner had his punt effort blocked last time up there, loading up the middle. Now James heads back. Nobody out here with this guy. Nice and high and fairly deep. Brandon James down to the 24-yard line. Deshaun Wynn back. In the backfield, so is Chris Leak. Rolls right, fires it out, wide open is Cornelius Ingram. Ingram, the young man who 
came to Florida to play quarterback and is also a member of the basketball team his freshman well, year. Here's the pick. Watch the pick come down right here, okay? Come in, come out, and don't put the camera on Reggie Herring because he is saying every word young kids shouldn't hear right now. There's the pick, the pick, and Reggie Herring's going crazy. He doesn't have any hair, but he'd be pulling it out if he had it right now. I always thought pick plays were illegal. Not if you don't get caught today at illegal. First down, 10 nothing. Let's go. Ooh. Deshaun Wynn, hello. Ernest Mitchell, number 90. And let's go back to the studio for a Home Depot update. In our studios, here's Tim Brando. Paging all Harris Interactive poll voters. Paging Patrick Cowan with the ball inside the five does take a nine-yard loss. A key stop for SC, Justin Medlock from 31 yards. It's 13 to nine. Tick, 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 tick. Just over seven minutes left in Pasadena. Oh, the times, they are changing, Vern. Oh, I I like the tick, 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 tick. I wonder, do, I wonder if I have a Michigan, Florida ballot anywhere. <laughs> Maybe I need that too. Oh, would there be a discussion about Michigan oh, against Florida? Here's Lee. Got a man open. Caught. Touchdown, Gators. Percy Harvin, 37 yards. This is the nicest release I have seen all year. Percy Harvin beating the bump and run at the line of scrimmage. That's Darius Vanette. Chris Hetland's extra point is good. This is how you beat man-to-man. -man. You defeat it at the line of scrimmage. This is a true freshman. Watch this move right here. Man-to-man -man coverage. Beat him. Go inside. Oh, I'm open. I'm open, and I'm going to score a touchdown if Chris Lee puts it there. And that is a guy that's doing exactly the way he's taught. And Leek says, I love it. Man-to-man, -man, give it to me all day. And so Leek and the Gators are up by 17. Welcome back to Atlanta with that last 37-yard pass. Chris Leak surpassed Danny Werfel, the icon of Florida football, total yardage. Chris Leak's total now 10,895 to Werfel's 10,875. That patience by Percy Harvin at the line of scrimmage is how you beat man-to-man. -man. You don't beat it by outrunning it. You beat it at the line of scrimmage. That was perfect technique. Joey Eos will kick off. Darren McFadden is not being used as a deep man. It's Felix Jones who grabs this one. Watch it. He is ever so dangerous. He has returned two kickoffs for 100 yards in each of the last two seasons. Whoa. First down and 15. Casey Dick. Whoops. Nah, that's not even within 10 yards. That looks like the after oh. duck. And a flag is going to be thrown on Reggie Lewis. Yeah, they called holding on Reggie Lewis. See, that's the question. Can Arkansas, with their, you know, functional pass offense, take advantage of the Knicks in the Florida secondary? Can they do it? Well, we raised it. Mitch Mustaine, the freshman, started eight games in one eight. Pass interference, number 22 on the defense. That yeah, and, and what he says is the ball was not catchable, but I think there was probably an interesting call. <laughs> I didn't see much there. I got, but look, look where the official was, standing right in all that white on the Arkansas sideline, and you know every player and coach was in his ear yelling pass interference. And so after the penalty, first down and 10 with 3.05 to go. McFadden goes right. By and large, Gary, he's been held in check tonight. Yeah, but by the defense, the great defense of Florida. The, the ankle now that's been tweaked, and I think, to be truthful, a better game plan by Florida than LSU. I think Florida has decided that they are going to bring a man over in motion. When, when Arkansas puts a guy in motion, they're going to follow the motion guy, and they get one more guy in the box. That's helping Florida. 
Second down and one, 2.28 to go. Arkansas is out of timeouts. Left side. And that should be enough for the first down, so the clock will stop either for a measurement or the movement of the chains and then be restarted. And here it is with 2.15 to go. It's and a it, first down. And this is crucial for Arkansas. Remember, Florida gets the ball to start the third quarter. So they need not only to, to run clock here, they don't want to put Chris Leak back on the field, but they also got to get some points here. And of course, new rules, timing rules this year. The clock starts when Mark ready for play, McFadden in motion. He's not 100%. Nope. Marcus Monk, he's gotten the fan beat. Touchdown, Arkansas. There's a flag, but it's going to be on Reggie Lewis. Yeah, he wasn't strong enough to pull him down. He tried to. Pass interference, number 22 on the defense. The penalty will be declined. Touchdown. I, I think Reggie Nelson lined up on the wrong side of the field. Look where Reggie Nelson is, and look where the one-on-one -on -one guy is. I wonder why he's not to this side. He goes to the wrong side. Look at it's one-on-one. -on -one. Boy, Florida does not like one-on-one. -on -one. Six foot six against five foot eight. That is not a good matchup. No help at all. Jeremy Davis with the extra point. Not the first time this year that Marcus Monk has caught a touchdown pass right before halftime. That, that had to be done by Arkansas. They could not have turned it back to Florida. You see a little stumble on the play, but the big guy, the touchdown maker for Arkansas, they got one too, keeps Arkansas in this football game. Let's go down to Tracy Wilson with Houston Nutt. Coach, a late touchdown to cut their lead to 10. What more do you need to do to get back in this game? Got to, got to block a little bit better, hold our blocks a little bit. Uh, Matt got a little sprained ankle, see how he is. Keep playing hard, 30 more minutes. Gave up a couple of big plays, got to stop that. Can you tell us at all how McFadden is doing with his we'll ankle? Know, we'll know, we'll start a third quarter. Thanks a lot, good luck. Back to you guys. All right, Tracy. That is the end of the first half with the Florida Gators leading by 10, 17 to 7. About two and a half minutes ago, this score was posted in the Georgia Dome. And the Florida Gator fans began to erupt because their team takes the field now knowing that they are playing for a shot in the national championship game against Ohio State. Well, Artie Johnson said on Laugh-In a generation ago, very interesting. <laughs> I've been saying since September, nobody can tell me who the two best teams are. Nobody knows. These teams are so even right now, and to anoint teams is impossible. You have to decide it on the field. It's the SEC championship right now. Florida better not take their eye off the ball because Arkansas is not going to back up. And Arkansas got that touchdown to a full within 10. 17-7. Brian Vavra, number 52, who is a terrific kickoff man. Will Attempt to put this one into the end zone. No, he won't. He'll kick it very, very short and a fair catch. Called and taken at the 31-yard line by Billy Latsko. Moments ago, Tracy Wolfson with Florida head coach Urban Meyer. Coach, are you aware that UCLA beat USC? No, we have our hands full right here with a very talented Arkansas team. There was no mention of that in the locker room. No mention of that. We got a lot of work to do tonight. Well, now that you know, will you coach any differently in the second half? No, we got to we got to win the SEC championship. That that's been our goal from day one, and we're going to go after it as hard as we can here in the second half. Thanks a lot, Coach. Good luck. I admire what he said. I don't believe a word of it about not knowing. First down and ten. Here's Chris Leak into the flat. Cornelius Ingram. Randy Kelly is there to meet him. There's a flag down as well. Well, the halftime numbers in this one, a 17-7 game. And you can look at time of possession. That is a, an anomaly for the Razorbacks. They're one of the worst in the country in time of possession, but it's been the big plays by Florida Harvin. And, you know, I think both teams, Vern, those big plays, one to Harvin and one to Marcus Monk, have given this team going yeah. into the second half That'll some hope. That'll be a five-yard penalty. We'll repeat first down. Is this something? How about college football, huh? Yeah, how about it? And so Urban Meyer said no. He uh, did not talk with his team about the result. 
Actually, here in, in the Georgia Dome, in this age of instant communication, cell phones and television sets, the crowd, most of them knew about halfway through halftime. Leak intercepted. Picked off by the Arkansas Razorbacks. Weston Dacus, the middle linebacker. Hard to believe. Dacus takes a couple steps forward. Leak, Chris Leak thinks he's coming, and then he backs up. Watch the middle linebacker. Just a little move up. Watch him move up and then back. Chris Leak takes his eye off him. Comes up and then goes back. Chris Leak gave up on him, took his eye off of him, and that called the intercept, caused the interception. You throw the ball over the middle, you must account for those linebackers. Dacus gets the first interception of the season. Here's the handoff. Darren McFadden, a little gimpy with an injured ankle. The tackle is made by Brandon Seiler. Second down and 10. McFadden in motion. They hand it off to him. He gets a block in the corner to Marcus Monk. McFadden with a stiff arm, first and goal, Hogs. Boy, the center, the center, Jonathan Luigs, number 63, is the guy that pulls. That looked like another gear right there, didn't it? Watch the center right there come out and around. Weeks comes right out. He's outside, gets it outside, has a chance to get a block, but both the corner and the safety run right by him. Tough for those big guys to block the little guys in space. The freshman Mitch Mustaine is on the field for the first time tonight. Started eight games, won all of them. Bobbles the snap. Goes left, he's down to the two. So Mustaine, who got many more reps with this full week of practice, was not called on last Friday against LSU, is in for the one play. Yeah, he was a little nervous, don't you think? Yes. <laughs> I don't blame him. You could tell they wanted to run the quarterback draw, and they didn't want Casey Dick running the quarterback draw. Ooh, Ray McDonald limping off, I think, number 95. One of their playmakers on that defensive line. Back yeah. in the Wildcat. And Darren McFadden is five yards back. He throws it. He's six for six this year for three touchdowns. How about that? Six for six, three of them touchdowns. Arkansas, McFadden to Felix Jones. Nobody covered Jones on the slot. He just ran back and threw it to him. This was a running play. Everybody else on the team thought it was a run, except for Jones and McFadden. They made eye contact. The offensive line was blocking run. They looked up and said, pass. Jeremy Davis with the extra point. Couple things to look for. Here's the coverage right here on the touchdown. But watch this offensive line. They think it's a run. They're going to block a run. Hey, nobody's covering to Felix Jones. I'm going to throw it to him. I can play quarterback. Like, it's like Peyton Manning. <laughs> He played a little quarterback at Oak Grove High School, Pulaski Oak Grove, North Little Rock. Kid's pretty good. Running and throwing. Out of the Wildcat formation, Darren McFadden has thrown the ball six times and completed six. And what's the area code of his hometown? That's that right arm, 501 in Little Rock. And I'm going to rename I don't like this Wildcat. I'm going to call it the 501 from now on. When he's at quarterback, it's the 501 for me. I'll listen to you. All right. I'll listen to you. Because Wildcat ain't a Wildcat if number 501 ain't in there. He's doing pretty good in 404. That's exactly right. Arkansas with the last 14 points. With five minutes to go in the first half, they were down 17 to nothing. Here's the catch. They move Brandon James all the way up to the 28-yard line. But good coverage by the special teams of the Arkansas Razorbacks. Remember, they gave up a 92-yard kickoff return to Trendon Holiday of LSU last week. Well, this Florida... Team this season. Look at the fast starts, Gary, and the slow finishes. Yeah, you know, I attribute a lot of that to inability to kick field goals. Kept teams in games, and then all of a sudden they had to, you know, hold on at the end. 
Now here's Houston Nutt, ninth year as the head coach for the Arkansas Razorback. He's behind Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator. It's first down and 10. Leak 0 for 3 in this half with an interception. That's Harvin who joins him in the backfield. Inside, oh boy, it's picked off. Here goes Antoine Robinson, and he will score. yards with the interception Jacob Skinner will hold Jeremy Davis will kick cuts it just inside the right upright remember early when I said those defensive ends made had to make it hard on Chris Lee watch Robinson he's not going to just come up field and hit Chris Leak. he makes it hard he bluffs upfield then goes back and takes the shovel pass. You have to put that quarterback in a decision. Chris Leak is not an option quarterback. His inexperience showed a touchdown for Arkansas. First and 10. Florida trails by four. 8.09 to go, third quarter. Harvin is the back. Here's the option, Leak. Did it, they again. He did it to him again, and he fumbled the ball. Yes, he did. He does recover. That's the second fumble for Leak in this ball game. Second time he's fallen on it. This time it's Jim Dart. If you don't run option every day, every day in practice against these great athletes, these defensive ends at Arkansas, you're just not built to do this. Chris Leak is not used to carrying the ball. He's not an option quarterback. He's not a Pat White. And so Tim Tebow comes into the game for the second time, second play tonight. Run the right. Freshman. Run right is the call. Which way did he run? To the defense's right. The defense's call for Arkansas when Tebow comes in the game is run right, run right. And that's where Tebow ran it, to the offense left, the Arkansas right. That was the defensive call. Boy, Reggie Herring. He's in the head of Florida right now. What are they going to give up, come up with next? Uh-oh, Keith Jackson just limped off. Third and seven. Here's Chris Leak. Four years a starter. Everybody spread wide, empty backfield. Leak back. Fires it out. That's short of the first down. At the 41-yard line, the catch made by Percy Harvin. 4.25 to go in the third and fourth and one. Well, I, I think you got to go Tebow here, don't you? Ooh, remember the Tennessee game? Absolutely. They brought in the true freshman on fourth and two, and they ran it out of the option. Fourth down. What do you think? Too early in the game to go for it? Well, if you go for it, you're going for it with 15 in the game. You punt the ball ain't bad, right? Eh. Urban will take his time. Oh, they can't take it. Well, he's going to got to go for it now. They just called their last timeout of the ball game. You have to go for it now. You, you a five-yard penalty here and a punt would have been no big deal. With a timeout, you must make that timeout count now. Florida has exhausted its supply of timeouts and so the huddle and it looks like we're going to see Tebow got to got to be him right. how about this you use your final timeout well and you're going to punt the ball or they got another fake somewhere great boomer by yep. Wilbur boy oh boy fair catch oh he fumbled it he fumbled it Touchdown, Florida! That's what they had in mind because they called timeout. Unbelievable mistake. Wandy Pierre 
Louise from Haiti. Are you kidding? That's as big a mental mistake as I've seen in a football game in a long time. Reggie Fish should have never backed up. Put your heels on the 10, you get the ball on the 20. Woo! It's a basic premise of special teams. Unbelievable. Chris Hetland for the extra point. So Urban Meyer calls timeout, sends the punt unit back on. Eric Wilbur booms one, fish fumbles. Wandy Lewis, Pierre gets the touchdown. Not only does he field the ball at the five, he fields it over his shoulder with no blocking. Five Florida players back there. That is a bonehead play. Even if he catches it, Vern, it's a bonehead play. Yep. As you said, Gary, you plant your feet on the 10 and let it go. Boy. Oofta. Sometimes strategy doesn't mean anything. That is almost unimaginable. Earlier today, USC lost to UCLA. In the current BCS standings, the Florida Gators were fourth. They trailed Ohio State, Southern Cal, Michigan. Let the debate continue. Here are the current BCS standings. Now, yeah, we got one that doesn't need to be there anymore, huh? Right. Here is the kick. And it, oh, the bounces are going their way. Instead of going out of bounds on the one, it's a touchback. Joey Eos. Maybe the enormity of the game is just caught up with these young players. Reggie Fish, just a sophomore. Casey Dick, the quarterback, also a sophomore. Felix Jones, a sophomore. Three-yard gain, Brandon Seiler, a junior. And finally, the noise level subsides. Well. That's uh, just an unbelievable it, scene. It, it really is. You know, you spend, if you don't think about this, if you're a coaching staff at Arkansas and Florida, you spend 100 hours working to develop a game plan, and it turns on a play like that, maybe. Darren McFadden in at quarterback. Hands it off to Felix Jones. Now it's the Florida Gator defense that's inspired. Led by Brandon Seiler and Brian Crum, numbers 40. And 13, there's Joe Cohen, number 20. Third and six. Well, I know a lot of people laugh at me, but I don't use the word momentum because I don't believe in it. Who had momentum? Who's got momentum? What does momentum mean? I don't know if I want it if I'm Arkansas. Ben Cleveland back on the field. Here's Casey Dick back to throw it. Fires it again, but it is... Short, Marcus Monk makes the catch. It will be fourth down and a need apparently of two. It's Brandon Seiler again. Yeah, he, he's the heart and soul of this football team. He plays with emotion. He's a smart football player. He reads run, he reads pass, and he's a great tackler. When I went to practice to watch them practice, the guy I could hear the loudest was Brandon Siler. Well, he wants to be an actor <laughs> after all this he, is over. He ain't acted today. He's the real thing. Okay, cinch up your seatbelt. This one might be fun. That's the end of three, four to 24, Arkansas 21. We'll return to the Georgia Dome right after this word from your local station. And so we begin the fourth quarter from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. The biggest play thus far in a game of uh, enormous turnarounds. The muffed punt by Reggie Fish recovered by Wandy Pierre-Louis. That put the Florida Gators back on top as we start the fourth. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, 
Tracy Wolfson, an SEC championship and a possible berth in the BCS championship game on the line. Fourth down and two. Jacob Skinner. Brandon James is the deep man. And he lets it go. It takes a hop backwards. Well, let's see what Ga Florida, Gary, now decides to do offensively. You didn't like the, the scheme here in the third quarter. Well, I don't think they should run any more options. I'll tell you that. If they do, it run it with a different guy. Listen, it's hard to win a championship. It counts to win games. Style points shouldn't matter in college football. Championships should count. It's hard. Ask USC. When the money's on the line and beating good football teams, it should be hard, and it is hard. Two good football teams are going to go down to the last few plays. And Florida has the ball now, first down and 10 with a three-point lead. Chris Leak intercepted twice in this half. Hands it off to Harbin. He comes back. Say goodbye. There are no flags. It's a touchdown, Florida. Sixty-seven yards. Percy Harvin. It was that same misdirection play following Billy Latsko that was successful in the first half. Give it to your playmakers. Follow number 42. This is the 13th game this year. It's the first time that Florida has been above 30 points. Watch this. Coming back. Here's 42 coming back the other way. Number four, Vanette, misses the tackle. Here comes Latsko, cleans it out. Follow number 42. And Latsko, Vanette, excuse me, overruns it. Percy Harvin, big play, Florida. How about, what is the one guy Reggie Herring told us he fears in this football game? Percy Harvin. Absolutely. A guy who can make people miss one-on-one. -on -one. He's done it twice. Remember, he abused number four on that pass, and then again on the run. Joey Eos with the kick. Felix Jones grabs it far sideline. And he is very dangerous. Almost kept his feet. Cut down at the 37-yard line. And, of course, as we have seen, Gary, this Arkansas team is a quick strike offense also. Yeah, but one of their holsters is empty. You yeah, know, yeah. I mean, does, does McFadden, is that McFadden holster have any quick draw in it? I want to see. We know Monk's got it. We know Felix Jones has got it. But do they have it without number five? There's McFadden. Monk. There's McFadden. And it's first down 10. Fake the draw. Casey Dick wants a bunch. He goes across to Monk at the 46-yard line. That's beautiful. Ryan Smith defending it sure was. That's beautiful. What do you do if you got very aggressive linebackers? They're making all these tackles. These guys right here, fake it at them. Look at him come up. Sidler's making all those tackles. Play action pass, square it. Terry Bradshaw's favorite route. Remember that? I do. The dig route. As a matter of fact. Every quarterback's favorite route. First down and 10. Handoff goes to Darren McFadden. Brandon Sidler with his 10th tackle tonight. That was an 18-yard gain a moment ago to Monk. Now McFadden's going top of the screen. Monk is down at the bottom. Play fake again. Casey Dick looks. Oh, it's hit. And Brian Crum can't quite get there. Jarvis Moss, number 94, got a huge paw on the ball. They call it a speed rush. And Florida's defensive line, it's been decimated with injuries, but they got a lot of them. And number 94 right there comes to the outside. Watch him spin it. Dwight Freeney type spin, and he goes around Tony Hugo, a really good football player that time. By the way, Gary, we do have news on Ray McDonald, and it's good news. They took him back 
and re-examined the arm. It is not a broken arm. It's a hyper-extended elbow for Ray McDonald. That word coming from Tracy Wilson. This is for the championship of the Southeastern Conference. Top to bottom, the best in the country. Casey Dick back. Across the middle. Crossing route dropped. Flag. Oh! Wow! Are they going to call this on Reggie Nelson, I think? No, Dorian nope. Monroe, number 34. They played in and out. The perfect defense against Monk. Dorian Monroe had him inside, outside. You watch. This was a shaky call, I think. Watch Monroe right here turn and look for the crossing route. Number 34 on the See him? He brackets inside. Here he comes. Monk goes around him. The ball's on the way. I can't tell. It's a little far away. One more look now. There's Monroe, number 34. He's playing the square in. He's playing the square in. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. At best, a nudge. I don't, I don't think that's a good call. I do not think that's a good call. Perfect defense. First down at the 29-yard line. Double Dick. pass, double yes, pass. Yes, it is. Cedric Washington fires it in the end zone. Felix Jones backs up. Touchdown, Arkansas. What a football game. It'll catch your attention. Cedric Washington throws it. Felix Jones catches it. And so Jeremy Davis is on to try the extra point. Casey Dick, Darren McFadden, and Cedric Washington. All three with touchdowns throws tonight. Here's Davis. Got it. 31-28. How about this call? My gosh. Is this any fun? <laughs> Nothing but. We'll be back with more after this. 12.29 to go in the third, 31-28, after the touchdown catch from Felix Jones. The tip-off and why I called it so quickly is look how deep Cedric lined up on the play. Here's Felix Jones hidden. Goes up the sideline, but that tipped it off. To make sure it was a lateral, he lined up deep. There's the lateral, and said, throws it on the run. He started out at Arkansas as a quarterback. Moved to wide receiver, and this was close to being dropped. Look at from behind on our super slow Peter Costas camera right here. <laughs> oh, boy. Peter Costas is going to love you. Really? He's Getting, got to eat. Oh. I, that's, that's the job I want. I've always wanted the, the Peter Costas swing vision camera. Now you are one. <laughs> Felix Jones has caught two touchdown passes tonight, neither from Casey Dick. One from Derek McFadden, one from Cedric Washington. Well, we said Arkansas was a quick, striking football yep. team, but boy, did they catch a break with the pass interference call on third and nine. Brandon James backs up and takes it five yards in. 12, 22 to go. Chris Leak is one of six in this half. Lobs it, taken by Caldwell, comes around, stiff arm. Step, no, he did not step out of bounds. He's pushed out of bounds at the 39-yard line. That's a quick gain of 20. Yeah, and, and, and Andre Caldwell is really coming on now. He had eight catches against Florida State, 125, bucket and a quarter yards against Florida State. Look at him. Brothers over there and playing for the New England Patriots, and Bubba Caldwell is finally healthy. He's much more healthier now than he was halfway through this season. Number eight's in the backfield. Arkansas plays run, run, run. That's what they were called, told to do. Percy Harvin is number eight. He scored twice tonight. Here's the option again. They pitch it to Harvin. Gets a good block. And then a fine tackle by Randy Kelly. Keeps him from gaining the first down. He stopped at the 49-yard uh, line. 
Get the ball in your playmaker's hands. Dan Mullen told me that he charts the touches by his playmakers. If one of his playmakers isn't getting the ball enough, he will say, we need to get it to this guy. Baker's not getting enough. Caldwell's not getting enough. Number eight, he says he never gets it enough. Percy Harvin suffered a high ankle sprain in the first play of the second quarter against Tennessee. It's hampered him most of the year, but not tonight, certainly. Here's Leak rolling right. Fires it. He's got a man open. It's too high. Intended for Jared Faison, who blocked a punt in the first half. And Leak wild and right. Yeah, this was a dash. They brought out Re Leak on the run. The ball was up there. But look, just enough coverage from Johnson. That's what man coverage is. If you don't make a good throw, man coverage should be there to knock it down. Third and two, Tim Tebow is on. Florida one of eight on third downs. Here's the freshman. He was held only three yards on four rushes last week by Florida State. He'll go left. He's got the first down here. Now that was the scouting report. Arkansas says Tebow right, Tebow right. Of course, they're making the call from the defensive perspective, and that's exactly where it went. Well blocked by Florida. I think Florida does not win two football games without Tim Tebow. They don't win Tennessee, and they don't win LSU. Remember that jump pass? Yes, so. <laughs> a double pump from the free throw line. Yeah. Almost a three-pointer. First and ten, Chris Leak is back on. Deep left sideline. Caught! Cornelius Ingram! This guy's coming on too. The last three games, Ingram has caught 10 passes. He only made one catch prior to South Carolina. Man to man, Joe Johnson. Did he shove off? Johnson says he shoved up. No, that's no shove off. Perfect. Wrong shoulder. That's a downfield shoulder throw. Throw it to the back shoulder, and that was perfectly done. Cornelius Ingram almost walked away from this football team last year. He wasn't being used. He sought a conference with Urban Meyer to quit the team, and Vernell Brown talked him out of it. And he makes another catch down inside or near the 10-yard line. See, the game plan is this. This is what Dan Tamalin told him. Yeah, Chris Houston's a good defender, but how good is their number four and five corner? Because we think our number four and five receiver can beat their number four and five corner. And right there, you're looking at their number four and five receiver, Ingram, going against number 20, who's actually listed third on the depth chart at corner. Ingram with five, Harvin with five, Caldwell with three tonight. Here's Leak, second and short with a three-point lead. Deshaun Wynn is back on the field, and Leak keeps it. Tries to stiff arm. He's got a first and goal at the five. Randy Kelly with the stop. This is a tough offense to stop. I'll tell you, when you're throwing the ball well and you got a quarterback that will take it up like that, you can move it. I saw it all the way back when Northwestern won the Big Ten title with Zach Kustak a long time ago. The quarterback run and a good thrower, tough to stop. And it's Tebow time again, first and goal. Reverse, right side, Andre Caldwell. He throws it, it's caught. Take Casey for the touchdown. How about that? player down at the 15-yard line. Yeah, it's Antoine Robinson, I think, too. Your playmaking defensive end. Tebow to Caldwell, and he throws it to Tate Casey, who's only caught six passes, including the touchdown, for the season. I'll give him this. Urban Meyer is stoic. Well, and, and he's gone for it. How about that fake punt? He has gone for it. Yep. Hetman's extra point is up. Perfect. Boy, is he calmer? It's amazing, isn't it? He was 3 for 12 in field goals until the first quarter. He made a 33-yarder, and Hetland 
has settled things down. Yeah, uh, you got receivers that can throw. We recruit receivers that can throw here in Florida, too. How about that? Both teams, same type of play. 9.04 remaining in this one, 38-28. The Florida Gators ranked fourth in the BCS standings coming in. And the ballot. Okay. Yeah. This is another way of looking at this, Michigan or Florida. Everybody, you can TiVo it, stop it. Here's your ballot. I've ranked, I think, from the loss all the way from most impressive win to least impressive win. Of course, Florida still has to beat Arkansas for yes. this to happen. Yes. But if they do, is it Michigan or Florida? Here's another way to look at it. You make your decision. Would you go tail of the tape? Would you give the advantage to Florida or Michigan? Another way to look at it. You're going to weigh in, I hope. Yeah. I'll I thought you would. You're always shy about expressing an opinion. <laughs> that one's out of bounds. Oh, dear. Joey Eos kicks it OB. So the ball comes out to the 35 yard line. 38 28. And the reason this uh, Michigan Florida comparison so much on all of our minds is because of the BCS standings to be released in their final form tomorrow night. McFadden now comes out to the near side as a wide receiver. Casey Dick looks left, throws right, inside run. Oh, they buried him. It'll be third down. Damian Williams makes the catch. And he's hit by Derek Harvey, number 91. Third and 11. Five minutes to go, 10 point game. Do you start to think of four down territory already? Razorbacks have one timeout remaining. Florida's out. Here's Dick going right, dropped by Marcus Monk. It'll be fourth down. Not a very accurate pass. Marcus Monk is six foot six. He's probably got an eight foot wingspan. Well, not eight foot. At least a seven foot wingspan. How do you miss a six foot six, seven foot? Well, I've done it before. <laughs> you can do it. It's embarrassing. Oh, look at They're going to go for it. Well, the problems continue, Gary, for Casey Dick. Yeah. He was three of 17 last week. He's eight of 19 tonight. It's fourth down and 11. McFadden goes right. Dick looks for McFadden. Tipped. Flag is thrown. It's intercepted, but watch out. This is Ryan Smith. Yeah, it was interference. It was interference. I think it had to be number one, Reggie Nelson, that got the interference. He got there too soon. Even Reggie Nelson and Urban Meyer know it this time. Pass interference, early contact on the defense, number 28, 15-yard penalty from the previous class. Well, they called it on Ryan Smith. I, I didn't see who it was. I just assumed it was Reggie. But fourth down, go to number five. Let's see it. I thought it was Reggie Nelson. No, it isn't. It's actually Monroe. Yeah. That's the second time. Remember, that's Joyner's spot, though. Right. Tony Joyner hurt in the first half, and you got the young player on there that's not used to playing, a little too aggressive. Second time pass interference call has given Arkansas a new life. They scored a touchdown the last time it happened. Casey Dick, draw play. Felix Jones to the 40-yard line. Earl Everett with the tackle, number 30. Florida has to be very careful. It's one thing for us to kind of look forward. But if you're on the field, you can't get caught looking at the clock right now. And for Houston Nutt, that sets up second down and nine. They'll do the reverse. McFadden back, looks for Monk. Monk is well covered. So he goes deep left side. Felix Jones, it's knocked down by Brian Crom. <laughs> How about this? Five different players in this game have thrown touchdown passes. Mm -hmm. Five different players. McFadden, second down, big play here. They let him throw another one. Right. But right now, Florida's playing zone. They're, they're staying back on everything, and they're going to say, if you complete it, you're going to plead it in front of us. You know, back in the late 40s when I was in the third grade and idolizing Doak Walker, 
I, we used to run some of these plays. I bet you did. On recess. Third down. Boy, they have tried everything tonight. Here's Casey Dick. Blitz. He throws it left side to McFadden. He gets up ahead of steam and is run out of bounds with a first down at the 27-yard line. I'm really surprised by that defensive call for Florida. They safety blitzed Reggie Nelson on third and long. Watch Reggie. Comes late. He's there too late. But why make this call? Look how late he gets there. Easy screen now, and Florida's in trouble. Very, very questionable call for the Florida defense. Co-coordinators are Charlie Strong and Greg Madison. First down and 10. Michael Smith is in the ball game. They hand it off to the 25-yard line. It's Felix Jones. Five different players, as Gary said, with their career touchdown passes. <laughs> right. Look at that. Leak with 87, Casey Dick with 16, and then three one and one. You know, Florida loves to substitute their defensive line, but they have so many injuries, they're very thin now, and they're very tired. They do not have, they're just sucking wind out there. Siler's going to go off. And Brandon Spikes, a true freshman, is going to come on the in field. Look at, look at Jarvis Moss. He's tired, but there's no subs anymore. He's lost defensive linemen. Marcus Thomas is gone. Tonight, Ray McDonald is gone. And it's second down and nine. Casey Dick goes deep for Washington in the end zone. Intercepted. Picked off by Ryan Smith. Hamstring and all. Number 14 by the duo. They came in number one. Ryan Smith played for Urban Meyer at Utah. Urban Meyer recalling he was a 147 pound high school football player when they made the recruiting visit. But there was something about him, he said, that he really liked. Yeah, you know, he's comfortable with the ball in the air. That's a real, that's valuable. And how about the way he's gutting out this game? You know he's not 100% with that hamstring. Took advantage of an NCAA rule that says if you are a graduate, you can transfer. He has two years of eligibility left. This is one of them. Tebow run right. Yes, indeed. Now they'll work on the clock. Arkansas, one timeout left. Ryan Smith, we mentioned his dad is a lieutenant with the Los Angeles Police Department. He told us earlier in the year he was so unhappy at Utah that he was going to transfer to Howard University. Yep. And then Chuck Heater, the defensive back, advised him of the new rule. He took 21 hours this summer to get his degree and thus comply with the rules and be eligible to play. They've lost once. That was at Auburn. And that game turned on a very highly disputed fumble call on Chris Leak when they were at the Auburn six-yard line. Arkansas has used their final timeout. You know what's interesting about the Auburn game? Florida did not even give up a touchdown to Auburn. They were field goals and defensive scores and a fake a black punt. Third and 11. His father is an evangelist. <laughs> That's what I meant. It was my Tim, dad. <laughs> Tim Tebow was born in the Philippines while his dad was on a mission there. Oh, there's a little late pop. Now that was nah, extracurricular. No, nah, just no? the guy running to make a play who tripped. Well, no you sound, now you do sound like a no, wishbone, no, watch this. wishbone no, watch this. quarterback. Somebody he just got shoved and he just pushed into T-ball. No big deal. Watch the play to the right side. Gets shoved and just kind of tries not to hurt him. All right. This is the SEC. We don't call those. Fourth and 12, Eric Wilbur will be called upon to punt. Fourth down. Arkansas needs a block punt. They're going to come after it. They do. And Eric Wilbur gets it off. It will bounce back. Don't down it. Tremaine McCollum not thinking. 
stop the clock. But of course, remember the clock starts prior to the snap. This game is over. Can't score two times in four seconds. Four seconds to go. The Florida Gators last won the SEC championship under the old ball coach, Steve Spurrier. That was in 2000. Here's the final play of this ball game, and the Florida Gators are the 2006 Southeastern Conference champions. Let's go down to Tracy, who's with Urban Meyer. Thanks, guys. Congratulations, Coach. Does this team deserve to play for the national championship? I'll tell you, we're going to enjoy this win. If you're asking me if we're an excellent football team, I really believe we are. We find ways to win, and that's the make of an excellent team. So I'm really proud of our guys. Your first SEC championship since 2000. Is Florida football back? Uh, we got a long way to get it back. The 90s kind of set the standard, and we're just working our tail off to bring it back. What are you most proud of about this team? I'll tell you what. Someday I'm going to write a book about these young guys, some of the stuff they've gone through and the transition, the issues, and, and to come back and play an excellent team like Arkansas. I love these guys. They're proud of them. Thanks a lot, Coach. Go enjoy the game. Thanks. All right, Tracy, thank you. Urban Meyer, what a two-year period he's put together in Gainesville. Good night from Atlanta. I'll take a breath right now. <laughs>